people, please wash your head and watch your steps all the time, and please do not smoke. Let's go. supposed to be a kitchen of the city before but we are saying underground cities I told you underground city dear people villagers that people in the past they didn't live their whole life down here no one could as you say impossible they were living like us on the ground near villages to underground cities but when they felt any danger or when they heard an army coming they were just coming down here and they were hiding at this underground cities just for a while, not for the whole time, just for a temporary time, they must do this underground cities like a shelter for themselves. While they were hiding here, they must use kitchen during the night time, right? If they use in the daytime, enemy could see the smoke and they could find the place easily. That's why we, we can say they cooked at night, they ate in the morning. Huh? And how they knew what time is it up there when they were hiding here. So they must look at this ventilation shaft. It is daytime out there or nighttime. Smaller, bigger, more than 50. They say around 90 ventilation shafts around the underground city, providing fresh air for us, for the city. So there, people, uh, during the hour tour under the ground, we are going to see many holes. We are going to see many niches on the wall like this. Let me give you the tip. If you see this kind of holes, niches inside the caves, inside the houses, this place is for candles, right? For light, for lighting, for oil lamps, if it's bigger than this one, for the oil lamps. And people were making candles using linseed oil. They choose linseed, they made candles from the linseed oil because linseed has less smoke than others. And as you understand, fresh air was important for the people who live here. If you see them inside, for candles, but if you see them outside, on the rocks, several niches together, for example, in the valley, we are going to see lots of holes outside for pigeons. If it's outside for pigeons, those are the pigeon nests. If it's inside, for candles. How do you feel? It's okay? The place? Okay, then we can continue. Yildiz, you can continue too. <laughs> As you the kitchen. I almost, I almost have to say uh, chicken. When I started first, I was saying chicken. We are in the chicken now. And here we have a winery example. Not a bathroom, not a toilet. Huh? It's a winery to produce wine, uh, to make some wine. We said 
They had villages on the ground, they had vineyards on the ground, but when they had to come here, of course they were taking their grapes with them, and they were putting their grapes in that small room here. And they were squeezing the grapes, they were squishing the grapes. When they squeezed the grape, grape juice was coming out from this canal here, and they were keeping their grape juice in that small pool. After they took it, of course, they were making vinegar, vinegars, some uh, wines and juices to drink. And this tradition, wine tradition or wine producing in Cappadocia, started with Hittites. Since 2000 BC, almost for 4,000 years, Cappadocia region still producing their own wine with their own grapes. If you're looking for a typical local wine from Cappadocia, please try Emir. E-M-I-R. Emir grapes only from Cappadocia, that's why, but also only from Cappadocia too. So, you know, if you, if you have to live under the ground, you will need wine. That's why many examples of winery we will see on the way. This is the first one here. And what we saw, what we're going to see, it will be only 10% of it. Today we are able to see only 10% of underground city. Actually, we still have more rooms and the floors. And you're going to see some tunnels around you go somewhere. Some of them closed by cages because it's a museum anymore and it's not safe to go there. But some of them closed naturally because of the rocks and the dirt in it. It's going to be only 10% of it. That's why you see the places first and you tell me how many people could live here. Let me explain it at the end of our tour. To see the place, we are following the red signs, the red arrows. But whenever you feel ready, if you, if you can see me, you can find the blue ones, blue arrows, blue signs will take you to the exit easily. And we are going to start with first tunnel here. When we pass the tunnel, please check your left hand side, okay? On your left hand side, we are going to see food storages where they were keeping their food, fruits, drinks. We are going to see their fridge on our left hand side here. If you are ready, after your photos, watch your head and mostly watch your head. So here, Exodus, do you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. In our car, on our bus, on the way, we already talked about two underground cities. We said in the region we have two famous underground cities. Widest and deepest one, Kaimatlu and Derinki underground cities. Now we are visiting Derinki underground city, which is eighth floor and the deepest one. Actually, these two museums are close to each other. There is just eight, nine kilometers distance between these two famous underground cities. And it's not me, not my colleagues again. The archaeologists claim that this tunnel here, just next to us, supposed to be a connection tunnel between other underground city or this tunnel supposed to be a connection between outside. If you start to walk right now, which you can, after six, seven meters later, you have to stop because of the rocks, because of the dirt. It's a closed tunnel here. But if it's not that one, it must be another tunnel in somewhere of underground city. Just in case, imagine, while we are hiding here, what, the, what happened if the enemy found us under the ground, right? This place is not going to be our paradise anymore, could be our hell. That's why they must build an escape way for the other underground city or outside. And what happened if the enemy found us under the ground? If we can't escape from the connection tunnel here, if the enemy start to attack, now we are going to see our first uh, a small tunnel. When we go down, when we go down, please check your right hand side this time. 
on your right hand side, we are going to say a stone door, a stone, a stone sliding door, a stone uh, rolling door mm -hmm. from basalt, basalt, andesite, stroma. The whole underground city is two far material, volcanic ash. Um, you can understand if you touch it, if you try to carve it with your nail, you can carve it easily, even with your nail. But now we will see the opposite layer of tufa. We are going to see a stone door from basal stone. And a dangerous time if they couldn't escape somehow, they were closing their stone door through the tunnel to defend themselves from the other side. And why they build this tunnel such a narrow and small, right? They were thinner than us, they were shorter than us, like comets. That's why they built this tunnel such a narrow and small. Okay, think about it, I will explain. Let's go. And today we are able to see the bottom of it. That's why I can easily say it to you. We will visit 55, 60 meters deep after here. And just next to ventilation shaft, I want to show you one interesting place here. We call it communication tunnel. This communication tunnel connected with the communication hall in living rooms. It means when someone says something from the upstairs, from the living rooms, all the other floor can hear him easily because this is just next to biggest ventilation shaft. And after here, unfortunately, we are going to use our longest tunnel in the city. And just this tunnel has more than a hundred steps and one way. It means we are going to use the same tunnel to go downstairs and to come upstairs <coughs> again. That's why, uh, if you want, we can go. If you don't want to go, also you can take a seat here. It's up to you. Let me check the tunnel. Give me two seconds. If it's empty, I will call you. Just give me two seconds, then I will call you. And you take the group and come after them, okay? <laughs> Recep gelebilir aşağıdan. Tamam. 
That's why actually we are sure this place is supposed to be a church before. But the thing is, in Cappadocian churches or churches in Cappadocia, we used to see and uh, we are used to see paintings, frescoes, wall paintings on the wall because wall paintings were important for the region people when the early Christians arrived in Cappadocia. At the, at the first century. They found a local community here, some villagers. They didn't know how to write and how to read. That's why some teachers, priests, they took some stories from Bible and they depicted the stories of the church's wall and they show, they teach the religion to the local people with the whole paintings. It was more shorter and easier way for them. That's why I am saying paintings were important for the region people. But as you can see, as you can see, we don't have any paintings under the ground. It must be because of the uh, humidity inside. It must be because of the moisture, humidity. Maybe, not sure. They try to make some paintings here, but after time, all paintings must fell down. And just next to church, we are going to say a city hall, like a big gate, like a big uh, space, for maybe for their meetings. They were bringing him to here, and they were bounding on the pillar like a cross, and they were giving penalties, they were punishing each other. But when you think, it not makes sense, right? Because, as you know, from 1st century until 4th century, Christians were escaping from the Romans. But this punishment is from Roman Empire. Roman soldiers were torturing the people found in the magic cross on the pillar. So, why they punish each other with the enemy way? This place cannot be a place for it. Maybe some monks, some religious men, priests were coming here and they were grounding themselves here on purpose to feel, to understand what Jesus Christ felt on his crucifixion. Or maybe they just hang the candles here to get more light, unfortunately. No one's sure. And just opposite of the church, you're gonna see a grave. Actually, it's written graves on it, but imagine. They must use that room like a morgue for themselves. More, not more again, see? More. While they were hiding down here, if someone died in the village, they were taking their dead bodies in this room because this room is more deeper and is more colder than other floors. And after they feel safe and the danger disappeared, of course, they were taking their dead bodies off to bury them on the ground, but how? Through the tunnels? That will work for them, right? So we can't say. They must use that ventilation shaft to take outside everything heavy, like an elevator, like an because this place that's a natural place. Of course, ropes are natural for sure, but the roofs, tunnels, floors made by humans, man made. What they did after they carved the rocks, what they did with the soil, with the sand, taking out through the tunnel, lot of work, need lot of men. So we can say this ventilation shaft also used like an elevator. Let me show you the last part of this floor, and if you want to have a look at the graves, we are going to spend some time in the graves, then I will take you to the other floor. Not a barbecue place, not parties under the ground. We have a water well here, providing water for the city, for the people. Water, uh, water well. But as you can see again, there is no connection between outside. So how they were providing their water for the water well? <coughs> they must found an underground river here, Whoa. or they must found an underground water source here. If they couldn't find anything from the ground, they must took their waters with themselves using that ventilation shaft here again. They built this water well here for sure without any connection because they knew if the enemy found any connection, they could just 
poison the water and they could damage the people easily. For the safety problems, they must build this water well here without any connection. On the corner, we have an interesting room. If you want, we can try all together, okay? Use your phones for the light. Use your phones for the flashlight. And take the tunnel here. And you tell me what was it this morning. <coughs> Alex, Alex, is it better to wait? Is it better to wait? Yeah, or take this way. Take this way. Okay, yes. go for it, Alex. Run. Try and come. I don't know, you tell me what was